Hello and welcome to another episode of Movies That Make Us. I'm Jake. I'm Tracy. And I'm Belle. And we are back for one more episode this year. Last episode of the year. Last what, episode what, of the year. What, what? That's crazy. I don't know what that was. I don't know. I don't know. That was, I'm it was, sorry, yeah. I apologize. It was like a modified air horn. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, it was magic. That's what it was. You guys it was John Ralphio from Parks and Rec. <laughs> oh, man. Again, I, I don't I don't know because I haven't watched Parks and Rec yet. Ben Schwartz, it, it, I it, like seems like one of the nicest guys in Hollywood yeah. and just a great, you know, just an easygoing guy, whatever. But he is the worst as oh. John Ralphio. Oh, he yeah. is brilliant in that role. If you guys if you haven't seen um, there's a set of uh, improv comedy called Middle Ditch and Schwartz on Netflix that's really quite funny it's just the two guys and i'm not a big fan of thomas middleditch but with ben schwartz he's great i feel that's like funny. i feel like you're just making up names no, no. <laughs> thomas middleditch, he's on the movie or he's on the tv series uh yeah, i get it it just sounds like you're making yeah middleditch and schwartz but yeah it's it's improv comedy long form it's it's quite quite fun okay yeah. okay well it it is the time of year when people are watching a lot of movies, movies that you probably don't watch any other time of the year. Like, oh, wow. Tracy. <laughs> I've got too fat of a head. What oh, are I, did, I didn't even think about putting any of my Christmas hats on. What is that hat? <laughs> it's there a pants go. hat. It's a pants <laughs> hat. Elf hat. Elf pant hat. Like, where's the rest of the elf? Like, inside your head? <laughs> what, what? It needs to no basis, Jake. <laughs> All right. All right. My, my son is hearing me describe this and had to come over and see the elf pants hat. There we go. Yep. That is my thought on it too. He just, yep. There it is. It's a little tight and it's a little warm. So I'm going to take it off, but whoa, had to make a debut. I love it. I love it. So <laughs> we're going to talk about some Christmas movies today or holiday movies. Um, but I feel like this is the time of year where, where sometimes I'll sit down. And I'm like, I want to watch a holiday type movie or a Christmas type movie. But I have seen all of them so far. Like I've seen all the ones that I need to see, or I'm getting kind of sick of just like in your face kind of Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you, you dig in and you watch something that's a little bit less conventional as far as Christmas movies go. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe yeah, we don't nope. do that, but no. I sure do. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you three Christmas movies each that are kind of unconventional Christmas movies. And we've left it broad as far as what we're defining as mm -hmm. unconventional. Um, so I am excited to hear what everybody has picked. Uh, I think I know one already that's going to be on Tracy's <laughs> list. <laughs> I mean. But I, we'll, we'll wait and we'll see. I'm. If you guys are all right, I'm going to kick it off this time. Yeah. Yes, I love it when you're first. All right. So here are the movies that I thought of for my list um, for unconventional Christmas movies. Um, and the first one is um, a Tim Burton movie. Mm -hmm. It takes place at Christmas time. And in my opinion, it's the best of this series of movies. I know and what I know, you picked. I know where you're going, but go for it. And I know people are going to argue that, but I it's love Batman my Returns. It's is on it on my, your list? I, that's okay. I, You know me. I've got some backups. I've got some okay. backups. I love Batman Returns. Danny DeVito is the Penguin. Christopher Walken as the really big bad. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. And Michael Keaton yeah. is still my favorite Batman. I love him as Batman. And I just was so excited when this movie came out. Uh, I remember all the build up to it. I know that Leading up to it, we had gone on a trip up to Washington. We stopped at like every McDonald's along the way. We got the collectible plastic cups with the lids that had. Anyway, <laughs> this movie stuck out to me so much because of the marketing and the merchandising. Um, and I just, this was, Tim Burton was completely allowed to be Tim Burton in this movie uh, as a director. More than in Batman. Like, they were like, yeah, you did great with Batman. We don't care what you do with this one. Do whatever you want. 
And he did. And it was definitely very Tim Burton. But it I does mean, all take place at Christmas time. Most iconic, you know, like Catwoman since the original TV show. So, mm -hmm. oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, it doesn't even compare. Her perform Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, I think, redefined the character for a lot of people. Um, and everybody that's played Catwoman since hasn't even come close. I mean, not even close. And I'm Halle, not even gonna... Halle Berry wants a redo. She just came out and said, I would like to redo mm. it again. I mean, I think if anybody deserves a redo, <laughs> it's Halle Berry. <laughs> I have no problem saying that movie just doesn't exist. Yeah, and, I just, agree, yeah. and so if she wants to redo and we just replace it. That's fine. Uh, yeah, we but, just scrap the other one. We burn it to the ground. Yeah, never <laughs> happened. But, but Michelle Pfeiffer was brilliant. Um, and yeah as a teenage boy i'm like she just is was just weird and in a good way so i like batman returns um so that's my first pick um my my second pick i'm going with another tim burton movie and i'm sorry I know which one. what's that i think i know which one but go ahead i know now i have to try to remember how to spell it because i <laughs> always will spell one of these words wrong so we'll see if we got it right but uh, another movie, it takes, it has a holiday feel to it. Edward Scissorhands. Nice. Johnny Depp, before he was like Johnny Depp, right? I mean, he did a lot of Tim Burton films, has done a lot of Tim Burton films. But this is just such an iconic role for him and such an iconic movie. This is one of those movies that like, you either love it or you hate it. And if you love it, it's because you love Tim Burton and you just love his style and his storytelling. If you hate it, it's because you don't, you don't get his storytelling or his style and you just don't like it. And that's fine. Um, but Johnny Depp is really good in this. Um, I love the whole suburbia thing. Everybody's house looks exactly the same. Everybody is trying to conform and be exactly the same. And then along comes Johnny Depp and changes everything up. Um, it's just a beautiful story. Um, and I, I love it. I mean, it, it's one you can watch at Christmas time. It has, some Christmassy stuff to it, but it's not in your face Christmas. And then my third pick has nothing to do with Christmas at all. <laughs> like at all. But I consider it an unconventional Christmas movie. Um, and I love watching it. It just hits different in December. Um, and that is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Ah. Um, I know, I know there's nothing Christmassy about these movies except that they all came out at December time or at Christmas time in December. Um, and so there's kind of a tie in there. Um, but for whatever reason, and maybe that is why, but I put them on in December and it just hits different than it does the rest of the year. These are three that. of my favorite movies ever. Um, I can sit down and think, I'll just watch one of them. Maybe I'll watch another one tomorrow or whatever. And then end up spending 12 hours watching the extended editions. No problem. Just in one day because I just love these films um, that much. So this is my third pick for it. Uh, I know people are going to say it's not a Christmas movie. However, there's a prominent Lord of the Rings TikToker who just came out the other day and said <laughs> well, it absolutely okay, is. Okay. Then. <laughs> Listen, like I, I got to look up his name and I will get it for you guys in a second, but it, it's like Stephen Colbert. And then this guy, as far as experts on Lord of the Rings stuff. So right, if he says right. that it's, it's totally fine. But I do think it's because of this is when they came out was this time of year. Um, and I always tie them in with Christmas. I do the same thing with Star Wars, but I didn't include Star Wars on my list. So anyway, there those are my picks. You didn't pick the Star Wars holiday special? Uh, the Lego one is really, really good. <laughs> the Lego one is really good. Um, but the original is so bad. Like even as a joke, I couldn't pick it because it's just not... <laughs> But now I'm excited to see what you have, Tracy. So what are your picks for unconventional Christmas movies? I already know one of them. Yeah, but I'm... Yep. we'll get to that. Sure. Um, so my first one, um, this is, I, I've got two kind of older ones. One, um, I'll, I'll start with the oldest first, then we'll go to the newest. Um, this is Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy, uh, Trading Places. It's uh, The Prince and the Pauper. It is about this guy who's a wealthy businessman and this other guy who's a con artist and they have to switch places. And, um, it's just a, it's, it's one that you don't think of with Christmas, but it very much is. Um, 
just early Danny Aykroyd is just is just so good. Um, and 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 Eddie Murphy, the chemistry between them is just fantastic. Um, fun, fun one to pick out. Uh, the second one. Now, this one I have not seen in a long time, and I'm curious to see how I feel about it now because this movie has Kevin Spacey, and while I am able to remove people's actions from their art. Uh, this the, Kevin Spacey's just tough for me now. When I watch Kevin Spacey stuff, I'm like, Ugh, it just you get a little uncomfortable. But this movie is meant to be uncomfortable. This is a very dark, dark comedy. Um, this is the movie called The Ref, and it's got Dennis Leary, um, it's got Kevin Spacey, it's a uh, a guy who's a, a burglar who breaks into this couple's house and they're having um marriage counseling therapy. And he gets stuck with the two of them and ends up kind of mediating and refereeing their arguments because they will not shut up. Um, And there are some just some brutal, um, sharp satire. Um, It's it's a very, very dark and sarcastic and kind of nasty movie. So it's definitely not a Jake film. It's not one that you want to put on with grandma around. But if just some of the dialogue is just really, really good. Um, and, and there's that one. Um, my third one, we all know, I've, I've talked about this on the show before, um, but it is just so much fun. It is so unique. It is so different. Um, it's Anna and the Apocalypse. And if, if you haven't caught an episode where I talked about it, um, it is a musical set in a high school set during Christmas. And uh, it's English. So you get all the you get all the hits. You get musical, you get high school, and you get uh, Christmas. But it's a it's the story of a young lady who is trying to deal with the troubles of high school while the zombie apocalypse occurs. Um, some of the funniest, most clever lyrics um, out there. It's it's uh, it would be rated R, but it's not really. R rated. I mean, it's a zombie film and, and you see some with like the zombie gets decapitated, but it's for comedic effect. It's not meant to be gross. It's not meant to be like the walking dead. Uh, if you watch the walking dead, there's nothing in end in the apocalypse that you have not seen 10 times worse. Um, but just so clever that I love the young lady um, who plays it. And it's such an interesting um, background story in that they, they did a, uh, a short film based on this, uh, or excuse me, they made a short film first and then they wanted to make the feature length film and the writer director ended up passing away and all his friends got together and made this movie and finished it for him um, in honor of him. Um, so that one, I, I, it's streaming somewhere. You can find it on, uh, you know, on demand. Um, but that one is just really Really smart, really funny, um, and just a lot of fun. Awesome. awesome. That was the one that I, I knew was probably going yeah. to be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Trading Places is a, is a great one, too. I mean, really, yeah. I think people forget how funny Dan Aykroyd was uh-huh. and is. Um, at this time, I mean, this is a younger Dan. He may even have still been Danny Aykroyd at this point. I don't know. <laughs> might have been, but... Um, and Eddie Murphy, of course, is brilliant. And you can tell that they just had so much fun making oh, yeah. trading places. So, um, all right, Val, what are your picks? All right. The first one I'm going to start out with is Greta Gerwig's uh, Little Women. Okay. Um, I have always, every Little Woman movie, and there are a lot of them, has always been like something that I usually watch uh, during uh, Christmas time during the month of December and January, but I do think that Greta Gerwig's is my favorite now. She did Lady Bird. Um, of course, you have Meryl Streep, Florence Pugh, who is now mm-hmm. just, I mean, she's amazing. Emma Watson, Laura Dern, um, Tif- or Timothy Chalamet, who is continually becoming um, one of my one of my favorite people on screen. He was recently in Dune. Um, he was also in Don't Look Up in a in a smaller role, but still every time he's on screen, he's stealing it for me. Um, he was in a lot of movies this year. Um, 
And, and I really think he's going to be something, but I get again, Florence Pugh also, but oh, for me, great. there's just something about little women that um, it's obviously a family movie. It talks about family and how all of, you know, this family sticks together um, in a lot of very hard times. Um, and there are parts that happen during Christmas, but to me, it's just kind of that warm movie that you can watch by the fire all wrapped up in your blankets. And um, it's just a feel good. Um, the next one, I don't think that I'm going to have very many people that agree with me <laughs> on, right. on this movie because it's not, I think it has like a 53 on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> um, well, I can't wait to hear what this is. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I mean, it's, you're going to be underwhelmed, but I, I, just, Iron Man I, 3. I like this movie. No, it's not Iron Man 3. <laughs> um, I, I was going to put Iron Man 3 in there. Um, but I didn't because that's fine that I can just have it to myself. Um, but this also may, might be one of those. Um, it's called The Family Man. Um, okay. And and for me, like, I know that it's not like the best movie ever, but I really like Nicolas Cage and Don Cheadle in this Ooh. movie together. It has Nicolas Cage, Tia Leone, Don Cheadle, um, Jeremy Pivens, um, and it's basically the story of if it's kind of basically like it's a wonderful life, but newer. And I'm just going to tell you guys, I have never seen it's a wonderful life all the way through. And I don't ever plan on doing it. Um, it's not my jam, but um, this is, this is if my life could have been different, uh -huh. you get to choose. And Nicholas Cage is this character who is this man who is, is living in the suburbs um, in New York state. Oh, I remember and this movie. And he's got a bunch of kids and Taylor Leone is his wife. And he's thinking, what did I do? Why didn't it turn out this way? And then he wakes up one day and he is, if he didn't get married, if he didn't have all these kids, if he was a successful person living in New York City. Um, and I just like the message. And I think that Nicolas Cage is underrated in this film. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then Don Cheadle, like he's the person that's kind of guiding him through like an angel, whatever you want to call him, that's guiding him through this event. And I just love their dynamic together. Um, it, and I would love to see them in another movie again, but I think Nicolas Cage is a totally different person and actor now than he was in this movie. So it may not be mm -hmm. the same, but um, if you haven't seen it again, it's not like the super overwhelming film, but it's just enjoyable to watch. And I love, you guys know, I love movies that challenge human nature. Mm -hmm. Um, and this definitely, you have to make, the, they're the choices that you make, you know, and sometimes I don't think that you have to choose family over career, but some people definitely do think you have to do it. Um, and Taylor Leone's character is like, I've never held you back from doing anything that you've wanted to do. This is in your mind. You have created this, this should be enough for you. And if you want to do more, you can, you know what I mean? So I just, mm -hmm. I love, I love their marriage and seeing that relationship on screen. Cause I don't think we see it enough. Um, but it's kind of him having a midlife crisis basically during Christmas. I have um, forgotten about that movie. That is a great pick. Yeah. So again, it has like a 53 on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't usually follow along the Rotten Tomatoes percentages, by the way, I have applied to be a, a a Rotten Tomatoes critic. I haven't heard back yet. But nice. <laughs> I feel like my voice needs to be heard because it's usually opposite. Of what's <laughs> Everybody <on>. else, yeah. <laughs> well, you are like the only Utah film critic that like don't look up. So I did like it. I know. And then most, yeah. most, like the only one. most critics in general did yeah. not like that movie. But yeah. for me, I'm here for it all day long. If you go in knowing what it is for, I just thought it had balls. It had guts. Like it just... It, again, it's. I don't think it's the best movie of the year, but you can read my review. It'll be on our our website. Um, the The last one is totally unconventional, and totally all about human nature, um, and it's called Children of Ven of Men. Children of Men. Oh yes, was in theaters on Christmas Day in two thousand and six, and if if you have seen it, maybe you haven't put this together. But it's like a Mary and Joseph loosely mm -hmm. story about about that. You, you have um, our, you know, where our 
uh, planet now does not have a lot of children. Women are not being able to give birth. And so it's kind of a modern day nativity story where this young woman becomes pregnant um, in a way that is unexplainable. And um, they're trying to get her to safety because now the youngest person alive on earth has died. And he, I think was like 19 or 20. I need to rewatch this movie, but this is human nature. Like at its uh -huh. best, it's very dark. It's very dark. But for me, this is one of the best like cinematography oh, yeah. movies yeah. ever made. Um, it, has, it has my favorite cinematic shot ever when it's the car scene. Yes. Yes. Hands down. That, that is one of my, that's probably my favorite. For me, I, this is probably like a surprise for most of you, but I love um, faith-based movies when they're made very well. And I was talking to this, to a fellow critic the other day who, um, and we were just saying, we love faith-based movies, but often they're not made well. Like we, yeah. it, it, it's just, and this to me is a faith-based movie that gives you a totally different perspective that it's not shoved down your throat. It is really that, the choices that we make as a society, which is very faith, like whether you believe in religion or not, or faith or whatever the bigger picture is that you believe in, that is total a human nature product of you. And what we do about those things as a society has caused a lot of hurt and harm. Um, but I really, this movie is just so intriguing to me and I don't think a, enough people have seen it. So that's my, third, my third pick. I hadn't thought of that as being a nativity story, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I I do want to point out that we really missed the low hanging fruit. None of us mentioned Die Hard. I think it's one. Yeah. That I think it's predictable. I yeah. think it's predictable. And I was trying again with Iron Man and Die Hard. I was trying not to be predictable and bring up things that maybe people hadn't thought of yeah. um, so that we could add more to their Christmas joy, which I mean, you know, the last movie I mentioned, that's going to, Children of Men is going to add so yeah, much I was joy. Say, it sounds oh, like a real joyful, <laughs> rick roaring need, family need, fun adventure. You need to sandwich that movie in between. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. In, in between like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and It's a Wonderful Life, but Children See, of Men. But, but sometimes you need that palate cleanser. Like, I love Christmas movies. I do. And I can watch, I can watch a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But, like, um, Last night in preparation, Val and I are going to be on on matinee heroes here in a minute. And in preparation for that, I watched True Grit, and it was like, okay, it's nice to watch something that's not over the top Christmassy, right? Uh -huh. And I think that these are some movies that you can do that. Another one that I almost put on there was Shazam. Yes, which, yes, yeah, that was really on my weird. honorable mentions. Yeah. 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 And and it's it's all takes place at Christmas time, which was really weird because it came out in April. I remember we went and saw it. And it was like <laughs> it's all very Christmassy. And somebody really has it out for Santa who made that yes. movie. Like there's, but but there are movies out there that's like okay, Hawkeye is another. If you guys yes. are following that series Hawkeye. on Disney Plus, yeah, it, I've been enjoying that a lot. I've really enjoyed Hawkeye. Um, some of my honorable mentions, Catch Me If You Can. Um, it, it was released on Christmas Day, um, but also um, it has a little bit to do with Christmas in there. The Sting mm -hmm. um, was also mm -hmm. going to be on my list. And I almost, I was trying to figure out how to rotate it in, but Tombstone, um, as we talked about it this year, is one of my favorite movies, um, came out on Christmas Day. Has a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit to do with Christmas, not a ton. But um listen, if movie. I can rope Lord of the Rings in there, you could definitely <laughs> put Tombstone in there. Yeah. And that's really, you know, we've talked about what is a Christmas movie before, and and that's why it really do, it doesn't bother me with like the die hard debate. Is it a Christmas? Mm -hmm. Listen, if that's part of your Christmas celebration and you want to sit that's down and awesome. watch it and that makes the season for you, that's a Christmas movie. And and mm -hmm. Tombstone yeah. could be that. Um, you know, Star Wars. I always tied in with Christmas because I remember one year when the THX VHS tapes came out. Mm -hmm. So before the special edition, there was the THX version. Yes. <laughs> and when that came out, that's all I wanted for Christmas. I didn't want anything else. And yeah. when I got it, I watched the whole trilogy. Like that's how I spent my Christmas. And so for me, there's memories tied to that. And so I can't define a Christmas movie for you. Some other people might want to, and maybe that I, and that's fine. I get it. But for me, it's whatever, 
has those holiday Christmas memories for you. Yeah. Christmas American 100%. Werewolf in Paris. I mean, you do you. Sure. You yeah, exactly. Do you. Was it in Paris or was it London? I think there were the two. The one in Paris ah, it came out on Christmas two. Day okay. and has a little bit to do with Christmas. All right, cool. Uh, we and, didn't and talk about Gremlins. Gremlins, Gremlins was also on, you know, the honorable mention list. Yeah. Which <laughs> I is, haven't watched Gremlins in a while. I should go back and check that one out. I'll, okay, so Val mentioned that she's never seen It's a Wonderful Life all the way through. I think, Tracy, you saw it for the first time last year or something. Yep, yep, first um, time ever. I have never like seen Gremlins. Really? I've never seen Gremlins. And that's wow. weird to me because that's... It's right like up a, your alley. I know. Yeah. Like, it's totally... So I need to go watch that. I think it was one that my parents thought it was probably too scary when it came mm -hmm. out. And I just never went it back and watched it. scared the crap out of me when I was five. And my parents still let me watch it because I don't think they were watching it. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, this looks cute. There's it's, a little it's got an animated there. puppet. It's fine. Yeah. Ah, oh, nightmares. Listen, but, uh, that, if you wanted to be a hit in the 80s, pop culture wise, just have some cute puppet type character, whether it's an Ewok or Gizmo mm -hmm. or E.T. or Alf, mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter. Just throw point. a cute puppet in there and it's fine. Um, if you get through Gremlins 2, Jake, you get a uh, Hulk Hogan cameo. Well, nothing I like better than a Hulk Hogan cameo. incentive for you to check that one out. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> the Hulkster. The Hulkster. Nothing makes Christmas like the Hulkster. I mean, <laughs> uh, remember when he tried to like get into movies? Yeah. Oh he yeah. Really bad. He tried. He had like little kid. He was like a babysitter of little kids or something. And yeah, yeah it was like Mister Nanny or something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he was in one called No Holds Barred. Oh yes, that was awful with, with that Zeus. That with came Zeus. up the other day in a circle of conversations. I have never seen it, and I don't oh, want man. to. <laughs> I don't oh, want to. Oh, it's so it's so great, man. And, and, I, and it feels like he was in one of the like three ninjas movies or something. I don't know. He um, he did a, a spate of them for a while, and then yeah, yeah, that was his thing. He was going to get into acting. He was going to be the is, Rock before the Rock. There, there is something to be said about professional wrestlers a big part of what they do is acting because right. they're telling the story and so i get the concept that if they're good at telling the story there they could be good actors and it works with like the the rock and i think even john cena to a to a uh -huh. lesser degree but hulk hogan was not good at that part of wrestling no. No, he so he was not. not good as an actor either he was really good on his reality show because he was just being him yeah but, but i really like with um uh, see to me the rock is is fun i like the rock i enjoy his movies but i know what i'm going to get with oh sure him. it is he's just the same pretty much all the time which is fine well and, he's, um, and he he knows where his wheelhouse is right you're not going to oh, see yeah. the rock in like an oscar nominated period movie. driven period piece well, i hope like it's that. i actually hope at some point we do Oh, it'd be interesting be interesting yeah i, I think i think he i think he could stretch his chops I think he's been acting long enough now that there could be a role out there for him. Um, I believe in him. I believe yeah, he could do Spielberg it. Spielberg could get it out of him. I think he. I think he's super talented, and I would definitely yes. always say that to his face he's, because he's, he's also massive. Just, yeah, and I would never say anything <laughs> that would upset the Rock. But, but but I but I got a lot of. Um, I'm I'm interested. He's not the best actor, but to me, I really like how he's really working to hone his craft as Dave Bautista. Like he wants to yeah. work. with interesting directors and he's like he wants to study and become a better actor and that's why he was so excited to work with like denny venu and in, in dune even and though he, he was have good a in part. dune yeah i was surprised with how part. good He'll he was more in the second part yeah um, and, and and we'll see more of him but like if all you think that he does is drax from guardians of the galaxy like dune was surprising yeah he was really good and and um Cena surprised me with uh, the Suicide Squad. He was yeah. more enjoyable than I thought he'd be because that was not my era of wrestling. So I never yeah. really saw John Cena perform. But um, that uh, the Peacemaker show I'm interested on on HBO um, yeah. could be could be interesting. Well, I don't know how we got onto wrestlers. In <laughs> I mean, you guys always try and get there, so I just let you go to it. Just let us go. <laughs> I do. I do have to say, I'm not a huge fan 
of Christmas What's movies. I don't watch oh. a lot of Christmas movies. Uh -huh. Um, but Eight Bit Christmas, I have. Oh to say, yes, I watched. I watched it while I put my Christmas tree up, and um, I I have to say it was super cute. It yeah. was it. It wasn't over the top. Um, I love Christmas movies like Jingle All the Way. Mm -hmm. Christmas movies that other people don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I I cannot think of Jingle All the Way without thinking of Conan O'Brien. He had he did when he used to have the like the pictures up there and they'd have the mouth moving behind the picture. Yes. And he, he would do Arnold Schwarzenegger and be like, In my movie, Jingle All the Way, it was not enough to jingle half the way. It was all the way. And I can't think of anything but that when I think of Jingle All the Way. Yeah, I yeah, that's like I like jingle all the way i like um there's a tim allen movie um oh, that's not it's not the santa christmas Claus. with the cranks christmas with the cranks i love that movie yeah it's I, really good christmas with the cranks i think they're hilarious i think all of the actors in the movie are hilarious i think it's so funny that like the whole neighborhood and then town make it their business that somebody needs to decorate their house to the point where they're stalking and like just verbally yeah. abusing this family, but it's okay because it's all about Christmas, which is totally like the opposite <laughs> of Christmas. But then they all come together to save the party for when their daughter comes home. Yep. But I just love it when, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Lee. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee Curtis, Curtis and him oh, are wow. at the tanning salon in the mall because that's where it would be. Yep. And they come walking out and then there's their priest and like, oh, <laughs> she's got a bikini on and he's he's like so tan and they put a black turtleneck on him thinking that it's going to help him be less yeah. tan, which reminds me of the Seinfeld episode when yeah. he like gets his teeth bleached and uh -huh. he gets tan at Kramer at the same time. Like it just, Christmas with the Cranks is my jam. Like it's, it is my jam really all the way. And Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd one. is he's, the stalker. He is the yeah. one that like gets everybody against them. Just give us, just give us, just give us Frosty. Frosty. <laughs> and the poor guy that puts Frosty up is like stuck on the um, roof all night. And then the guy that knows everyone, but none of them know who he is. But they're all just like, yeah, this creepy guy is here. But yeah, he happens to be the Santa Claus. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. and I think I think there's a it's reason. A fun, to that's a great movie. I I haven't watched that this year. I need to go watch that one. <laughs> yeah, I just I I think so much of the Christmas movies tend to get so stereotypical. Like, yeah, I, it, it kills me that Hallmark puts out like 50 Christmas movies a year. You know, and it's apparently also, there's someone at my door, so I'm going to be right back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but Hallmark like, is there's it's there's saccharine. Crazy. You know, there's there's saccharine. They're overly whatever and there's a really funny um it's a bad movie it is a low budget bad movie but it's called letters from satan and um, <laughs> a girl a little girl writes a letter to she thinks she's writing to santa claus but she misspells his name and writes a letter to satan oh my god asking, asking for him to kill her parents because she hates her family and how old is this girl uh she's like nine or something uh, but she's she's just going through the whole maybe she's Tanner or a lot of anyway she's she's just doing this whole um, I hate my family you know they're so mean to me they won't let me do what I want that type of thing yeah um, or I, I don't think she says kill my family but it's like get rid of my family or something yeah um, but that one it's it's a total spoof on the Hallmark Christmas movie like they they uh, part of the scenes are set in like this little coffee shop in this small little town and. <laughs> It's just, it's the, 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 the Hallmark ones kill me. And like, they film like five or six of them in Salt Lake every single they year. Do. I was in one. Were um, you? Yeah. And that's the day that everything got stolen out of the trunk of my car. All my that's winter right. clothes. We that's shot it in right. July. And, um, but I, I, I am blessed. I'm going to say the word blessed, but one of my fellow, um, one of my fellow, um, Utah Film Critic Association ladies, critics, um, has a podcast called Hallmarkies, and uh -huh. she covers all the Hallmark movies, and I have her on B98.7 every Thursday now so that I 
don't have to watch any nice. of the Hallmark there movies. You so go. She comes on as the expert and there have been so many Hallmark movies this year that she has done a podcast every day oh my for gosh. the last couple of months oh every gosh. day like she interviews the actors like all this stuff so if you are in the hallmark movies we really need to have her on the show at some point uh -huh. she's so much fun she's the one i was talking about when i said we love um faith-based movies but we just wish oh. they were made better <laughs> they were better uh -huh. quality films um and because we went and saw um the new zachary levi a uh, movie oh, about yeah. um Kurt Warner. Kurt, Kurt Warner, which Underdog. which to me, um, I really enjoyed that movie, by the way. You guys know I love my sports movies. I, I love Zachary um, Levi. So. And Zachary Levi, Anna Paquin. Um, and but she saw it as a faith-based movie because they do include faith in the movie because he is very religious. But mm -hmm. to me, I didn't feel it was a faith-based movie because I felt like it was better than <laughs> like, technically better. And the acting was better. The story was better. Good. I figured it, it was more of a sports um, feel good movie. Uh -huh. um, and that's the way I like faith-based movies. I don't want to go in knowing the unless it's specifically a story. Like there are some um, LDS movies that are specifically about someone in the church and their journey. That's fine. Like it's and Catholic, right. whatever. But when you're doing yeah. a movie, that is a family movie and there is so much like faith being jammed down your throat. It's not my favorite, but when it's a part of the all around story so that you can yeah. learn more and you're not just focused on that, I'm okay with it. And I think, I feel like that the underdog or underdog was, was very, I didn't know much about him again. I love sports movies. I don't know much about sports. I don't watch a lot of sports, <laughs> but I just love, the feel good sports movie. And so yeah. if you get a chance to see that one, Zachary Levi needs to be in more things. Mm -hmm. um, I, he's fantastic. Anna Paquin's hairdo annoyed the crap out of me, the whole movie, but his wife has this very, very short hair yes, and they put an awful wig on her and it was a little distracting, but, but it well, was that's good. good Cause good I, I saw the preview and I'm like, this could go either quite good or it could go really. Yeah. I could see people Strictly not sweet. loving it. For me, I I like I enjoyed it. I I enjoyed it. I would watch it again at home, like just to cleanse, like after a horror film or something. Uh, well, and, <laughs> and and the the Kurt Warner story itself was an intriguing, interesting yes. story when yes. it was unfolding. I mean, he mm -hmm. he was a store clerk working, doing that and playing um, arena football. Which he, he did not want to do. Like, he yeah. didn't want to do it. Because <laughs> I think everybody kind of saw it as a fad, which, you know, turned out to be 100% true. And, <laughs> like, for him to be as successful as he was in the NFL and to have mm -hmm. the career that he did at the point that he was in his life, it's pretty amazing. And so I'm excited to see it just from that aspect because I do think it's a, an interesting story. Um, so I think I – think, um... It was enjoyable. I definitely think if you're into um, sports, feel good, underdog movies, which mm -hmm. is what yeah. I love, then you're going to like it. It's not going to be as good as like the miracle or, yeah. but I, I, I enjoyed it. It was a different take on a story and he, he is religious, but it, they didn't put it in a way that I felt like it was a faith-based movie. Nice. Yeah. I just felt he was a kid from it was part of mid his middle America and that he kind of struggled with actually his um the faith part of his life but his soon to be wife did not she was and she was put through a lot of hard things um mm -hmm. and so it was yeah it was enjoyable so when it comes out um i do believe that might be a, a christmas day yeah i think it is so exactly. that kind of ties in <laughs> what go. we're talking about so now it's a christmas movie <laughs> so, so it's fun the, the matrix resurrections comes out on the 22nd so that'll be a yeah. totally a christmas movie now. Sure, yeah <laughs> absolutely i am I, so interested in that one because i don't know they i feel like they've done a really good job of keeping the plot under wraps yeah, yeah. like even with the trailers like it's it, i don't know if you saw the most recent trailer i haven't watched like, any of the trailers for it i've i'm trying to go in okay blind. but i won't yeah. well, and, you and can the, talk I, about it i just haven't watched any of them i think the original matrix matrix was so good and just oh, so yeah. different 
the the second and the third one i didn't enjoy as there much were parts that were good yeah. yeah but like the first one was just so different and so outside the box i mean it became such a big part of pop culture too i mean you hear people talk all the time like well maybe we're just in the matrix or you know things uh-huh. like that um well, joking kind of, or being serious i don't know they kind of got into a little bit of like what you would think religion is just like in star wars uh-huh. i mean you have a savior uh-huh. you yeah. know that is there and he's trying to you know so it is kind of religious in in that aspect so mm-hmm. you could kind of say it yeah. it goes along with see and we talked about this last week we are we are just a couple of weeks away from the end of the year as we're you know filming and recording this there's still some great stuff coming like underdog like matrix resurrections like uh spider-man away home like yeah. some great stuff mm-hmm. so it's exciting um, we want to hear from you what some of your favorite Christmas movies are, uh, conventional, conventional. Like we said, we don't care what you use as your definition for a Christmas right. movie, but we'd love to hear what you love and why. Um, you can send that feedback to us at podcast at movies that make us.com or just give us feedback on YouTube or on the Facebook um, posts or Twitter or Instagram. Like we'll take it anywhere. So um, pigeon, pigeon. Yeah. Send it to us that way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, totally. There, I mean, there are some social media platforms that we're not on, so we don't have to talk about those, but uh, but yeah, we, we'll we're not it. on fans only yet, but maybe in the future. <laughs> well, that's that's it changed. doesn't all have to be about skin. Well, well, the, the owners changed that now. He didn't realize that that's what people were using his site for, which yeah, is really, really, yeah. Really? No, I don't believe him when he <laughs> no, says that. No, no, no. I'm just saying that. Really, guy? Really? In any case, it's been a great year. Thank you, everybody, for being part of it. it we had so much fun this year, um, and we are looking forward to a great 2022. Uh, and until then, and until next time, we won't see you at the movies. But we will wish you a Merry Christmas. We oh, wish you a off. Merry no, Christmas. <laughs>